Dear ladies and gentlemen, both here in Germany at Justus Liebig University Gießen and in the United States of America, in Wisconsin and beyond. Dear guests of honor here in Gießen and worldwide, welcome. Here with us is a group of about 40 participants on site and we're so happy to have at least that number as a virtual audience to be with us online, mostly from our partner institutions in Wisconsin, but also from New York, Los Angeles, and the United Kingdom. My name is Julia Foltz. I am the director of the International Office at Gießen University, and I will guide you through our inauguration program of the Mildred Harnack Fish Memorial Staley today. What brings us together is a remarkable woman, Mildred Harnack Fish and our joint German-American effort to keep her memory alive. This joint effort is reflected in our program with words of welcome and brief speeches live here on site, as well as pre-recorded video messages from our partners in the US. As first speaker, I would like to invite JLU's first Vice President, Verena Dolle. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, good morning to our guests in Wisconsin. I'm very pleased to welcome you all very warmly to JLU to the official dedication of the Mildred Harnack Fish Memorial Staley. And I will do this sure in, on behalf of our president, Mr. Uh, Professor Dr. Gerbrato Mukherjee, who unfortunately cannot be here today. I would like to particularly welcome and sincerely thank Professor Christina Sinemus, Minister of State for Digital Strategy and State Development and Chairwoman of the Hessen Wisconsin Friendship Society for her participation, as well as Ines Klaus, Deputy Chairwoman of the Hessen Wisconsin uh, Friendship Society. I would also like to extend a very warm welcome to Dietlin Grabe Bolz mayor of the city of Gießen, as well as to our colleagues from the Hessen State Chancellery, the Hessen State Ministry of Science and the Arts, and from the Consulate of the United States in Frankfurt. And of course, a heartfelt welcome to all the researchers, colleagues, and representatives of JLU and of our partner institutions in Wisconsin who are with us today. It is truly a great pleasure to welcome and meet all of you personally. While we are very grateful for this opportunity, we still feel the physical absence of our colleagues and friends from the United States and wish they could be here with us today. However, we are very happy to be able to share the dedication of the Mildred Harnack Fish Memorial at JLU with them via live streaming. Please let me extend my sincere thanks to Tommy Thompson interim president of the University of Wisconsin system and to Melissa Hughes, state secretary of commerce and CEO of the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, as well as to all of our colleagues at the University of Wisconsin system and at the universities of Wisconsin for their virtual presence today. A special greeting goes to out to our colleagues and friends at UW Medicine and UW Milwaukee who are joining us online. Beyond political actors, institutional and academic partners, we are particularly honored to welcome Jilly Allenby, Nicole Hutch Hutchings, and Rebecca Donner, relatives of Mildred, ha Mildred Harnack Fish and Arvid Harnack, among our virtual guests. Thank you for joining us. Today, first and foremost, we are truly honored to commemorate Mildred Harnack Fish a strong woman who took action for freedom and liberty in the dark age of the Nazi regime in Germany. Born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on um, September, I think it's fe February actually, February, oh, September. September, okay. September. September, thank you. September uh, the 16th, 1902, Mildred Harnack Fisch studied English language and literature at the University of Wisconsin Madison and completed a doctoral degree in American literature at Justus Liebig Universität Gießen in 1941. 
guided by their political and democratic conviction and being acutely aware of the political and social developments in Germany, she and her husband Arvid Harnack became active in the German resistance movement, movement against Nazi rule, which ultimately cost them their lives. Mildred Harnack Fisch was executed in Berlin Plötzensee prison in 1943. The purpose of this memorial here at JLU is to commemorate her memory and to be a tribute to a life and death that will remain unforgettable. Two years ago, representatives of JLU had the great privilege to attend the inauguration of an identical memorial in Madison, Wisconsin. Today, it is an honor to dedicate a similar work of art, over there, to the life and courage of Mildred Hanak Fisch, right here on the campus of Cultural Studies and Humanities of JLU. In honoring those who opposed the Nazi regime of injustice, we explici explicitly face our historical responsibility, not only in the region of Hessen and through our academic work, but also as part of our commemorative culture. Remembering the crimes perpetrated by the Nazis and keeping alive memories of the people who courageously resisted Nazi tyranny is our utmost social responsibility. At JLU, we carry this responsibility deliberately at an institutional level. As the largest educational institution in central Hessen, JLU will continue to take social and cultural responsibility and give impetus to internationalization in Gießen, the region and the state of Hessen. We are strongly aware that we can only accomplish this goal together and through the work and commitment of our scholars, our students, our staff, as well as with the support of political actors and private partners who share our beliefs and values. It is therefore very important for us to increase the awareness of this social and historical responsibility, specifically in the new generations and among our student community. The significance of today's event for us is nothing less than extraordinary. The realization and installation of the Mildred Harnack Fish Memorial Stele at JLU has only been possible through the great personal commitment and financial support of many individuals and institutions. Our gratitude, gratitude goes particularly to Professor Nick Schweitzer of U, uh, W Medicine, present here today, for providing the original idea and for supporting this important project with his inspiration and resources. At the same time, we would like to thank our sponsors, the Hessen State Chancellery and Volksbank Mittelhessen for their very valuable financial and organizational support. This is a very special occasion, not only for the JLU community, but also for the Hessen-Wisconsin State Partnership. This year we celebrate the 45th anniversary of the state partnership between Hessen and Wisconsin. On both sides of the Atlantic we benefit immensely from our strong cooperation in science and research, education, professional training, industry and business. Here at JLU we look back on more than 35 years of strong bilateral cooperation with the University of Wisconsin-Madison and the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. This cooperation has enriched our goals in research and teaching as well as our academic and private lives in many ways. In addition, since 1998, through the, through the Hessen-Wisconsin State Academic Program and its coordination at JLU, we have assisted and supported more than uh, 1,500 students from Hessen and Wisconsin to participate in the unique Hessen-Wisconsin Exchange Program funded by the Hessen State Ministry of Science, Research and the Arts. Also beyond the state exchange program, we are strongly committed to supporting student and academic exchange. For this reason, JLU has established the Mildred Harnack Fish Scholarship to be awarded for the first time this year to a UW Medicine student for studying here at JLU. Our aim is to keep offering this scholarship to f future students as well. For many reasons, and despite the geographical distance, we feel very connected to our par partners and friends in the US and in Wisconsin. And we feel very strongly the solidarity and bond that brings us together today 
in remembering and honoring the life and courage of Milda Tarnak Fish. Today's event is an important step on our way to continue, strengthen and further develop our transatlantic collaboration in research, education and society with our partners in Wisconsin. Beyond today, we look forward to future networking events in presence, hopefully, and virtually, that keep bringing us and our academic communities and societies closer. On behalf of the University Board of JLU, let me wish you all a pleasant afternoon and morning. I hope that you will enjoy this special ceremony today. Thank you very much. Hello, we are Niklas Scholz and Lukas Oratnicek and we are the musical formation Corner Boys. We are standing here right in front of the Mildred Hanak Fischstele on the campus of Justus Liebig Universität in Gießen. We are very happy to be here today to commemorate the life and courage of Mildred Hanak Fisch with all of you in Gießen and in Wisconsin. To accompany this ceremony, we will be playing our songs right here next to the memorial. today the Hessel Minister for Digital Strategy and Development, Christina Sinemus. I believe no one else could better stand for a truly active exchange between Hessen and Wisconsin than her as acting chairwoman of the Friendship Association Hessen-Wisconsin and, if I may add, as a mother who encouraged her daughter to attend and to participate in the student exchange with Wisconsin and who welcomed back home an enthusiastic girl forever connected to Wisconsin through her uh, fantastic experience. Thank you for joining us today, Madam Minister.
Thank you very much for this nice welcome words. And hello to everybody, even in Wisconsin and uh, wherever in the world. And I first of all want to say hello, Missy. I know you are looking at us, but you are not with us. So first of all, uh, I hope you will see us in the next year, maybe in this year, personally. Hello, Tommy Thompson, who is really a great friend of our partnership and who really promotes all the years what we are now on the stage over the 45 years. Dear Mrs. Grabe Boltz, dear Professor Dolle, Ines Klaus will come later, I guess, dear representatives of the United States, Consulate General, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very pleased to be here today on behalf of the Prime Minister of Hessen, Volker Bouffier, to continue the excellent relations between the states of Hessen and Wisconsin. On behalf of the Prime Minister, as well as the entire Hessen state government, I would like to send the very best warm regards to you. And today we are here because of this, what we are seeing outside, the Mildred Hanak Fish Memorial Sculpture. And it's an honor for me to join you here today for this dedicate the memorial sculpture to Mildred Hanak Fish. And I would like to start with the first words of a poem. And this is a poem who was written by one of her close friends. It was Clara Liza. And she wrote a poem after the death of Mildred on the 16th of February, 1943. And it was titled, To and from the guillotine. So then, so then it's true. The final word has come. Certifying the price that you, woman of gentle American birth, have paid for working quietly unafraid against an evil which you knew. Mildred Hanak Fisch was a very courageous woman who stood up for freedom and against the dictatorship of the Nazi regime until her last breath. She stood up against a brutal regime that terrorized not only Europe, but the whole world with internal war and unimaginably suffering. Mildred Hanak Fisch, Kato Bontjes van Beek, as well as Hans and Sophie Scholl, they were a lot of very brave people who courageously resisted the Nazi tyranny and were even prepared to sacrifice their lives for freedom and humanity. It is precisely in honor of these courageous people to ensure that they are not forgotten and to remember their historical and moral literacy. This is the purpose of the memorial sculpture to Mildred Hanek Fisch, which is dedicated here at the Justus Liebig University as a counterpiece to the memorial sculpture erected two years ago, you may remember, we were part of the delegation of Volker Bouffier, two years ago in the Marshall Park in Madison in Wisconsin. And not only these two memorials and Mildred Hanak Fisch herself can be seen symbolically as a link between the state of Wisconsin and the state of Hessen. The two states are united by a long-standing, fruitful partnership in many years. And you already remember it, which will celebrate on Monday, the 20th of September, 45 years ago, 45 years ago, since the beginning in 1976. And this is something I really want to point out, which is considered the first partnership between US state and a German state, the first. Hessen is always the first, yes, but <laughs> Wisconsin as well. 
And we have been in a deep and continuous exchange over the years. To start a partnership is one, but to really build it up and continuously build more on it, this is the miracle of friendship. And especially a university as a place where free and steady exchange of thoughts is excited every day underlines the high importance of networking, cooperation, intercultural communication, and committed the partnership. In order to continue these very good relations and to maintain our close exchange, many people, and some of them are sitting here and virtually, uh, our many people in both states commit to this international partnership between Wisconsin and Hess. This is not only university, this is a very good example, but always the exchange programs of the schools. You already mentioned it. Eight years ago, my daughter Louisa has been part of this exchange program and has been in Wisconsin. And she said, it was never so cold as in Wisconsin. Mine, minus 25 degrees, I guess. But I never met so much really warm-hearted people. And I think this is something where our partnership stands for. It's examples for how the schools, how the university exchange programs go forward, the employees in the companies who enable internships for guests from abroad, and even in my resort of digitalization and economies, there's a lot in the future to do, and we are willing to do a lot in the future. And the families who host guests during an exchange in Wisconsin as well as in Hessen. These are the networks where we have to build on. And as the chairwoman of the Friendship Association Hessen, Wisconsin, and as a member of this association, and I really have to realize this, over 20 years, the achieved level of cooperation is also a matter of heart for me. A heartfelt thank you and my highest appreciation for your dedication to keep this partnership running. Dear guests and friends, we can be proud of what we have already achieved together during the 45 years of partnership. And I'm sure we will continue to maintain this close and intensive exchange with each other and thus be able to deepen our partnership even further. And even though being the Hessian Ministry of Digital Strategy and Development, I'm also looking forward to times when we're not being only digital, being face to face, having meetings face to face, and then build our partnership in the future. Even if we can only meet digitally today, let's face into the next 45 years of our partnership, let's do the best we can to ensure the ongoing success of this partnership and Mildred Harnard Fish and all the others should not have been lost their lives for nothing. We built on the partnership, we built on the history, we built on uh, very proud women and we can proud of all what our states have do in the last 45 years and I thank you very much for your attention. I'm looking forward to all the words we hear now and in future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Minister. When we first engaged in our endeavors here at Gießen University of commemorating Mildred Hanak Fisch on our campus, inspired by Nick Schweitzer during a lectureship at Gießen University, we would never have thought to be able to generate such visibility, support and participation. Back in 2018, we started with a preliminary idea of a commemorative plaque much smaller and less interconnected than today's sister stele, 
which is identical to the memorial in Wisconsin. We're deeply grateful to our colleagues and friends at the Hessen State Chancellery, as well as in the state of Wisconsin, at UW System and at UW Madison for their commitment and hands-on support. The strong connection between our institutions and our sister states is reflected in the following video messages from the governor of the state of Wisconsin, the WEDC, and the interim president of UW System. Guten Tag, Governor Tony Evers here. And I'm secretary and CEO of the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, Missy Hughes. As governor of Wisconsin on, and on behalf of the people of our state, I want to thank you for the opportunity to join you virtually today as we honor the memory of Mildred Harnack Fish. Mildred Harnack Fish was an incredible person who to this day continues to serve as, as an example to folks everywhere to counter oppression. Here in Wisconsin, our schools are getting ready to commemorate the 119th anniversary of Mildred's birthday. And also coming up is the 45th anniversary of the signing of the original partnership documents by Wisconsin Governor Patrick Lucy and Minister President of Hessian, Albert Oswald. On July of 2019, Wisconsin was very fortunate to again welcome Minister President Bouffier and a delegation of educators and government officials to our state. Part of the delegation was able to attend the dedication of the memorial to Mildred, which you can see behind us. And these memorials in Madison and Giessen are a testament to our shared ideals. Even though we're disappointed that the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic means we aren't able to join you in person this week, we're excited to be able to join you virtually to still be a part of these ceremonies, celebrate Mildred and her lasting legacy, and strengthen the ties between our partner communities. Mildred's legacy, one of courage and sacrifice, remains a lesson to all of us about the importance of standing up for what is right, even in the face of danger. And as a citizen of Wisconsin and Germany, she is also an important example of the goals and positive outcomes of international partnerships, like sister state, sister county, and sister city relationships. As sister states, Hessen and Wisconsin are linked together by business ties, student exchanges, and cultural activities. But even more important are the personal connections forged through sister, sister communities, which can introduce us to new friends around the world. The people of Wisconsin are honored to share the memory and legacy of Mildred Harnack Fish with the people of Hessen, but we cannot leave her heritage ju as just a memory. We must continue and expand our efforts to promote cross-cultural understanding and partnerships. And we've got to keep working together to make the world a better place. Thank, Thank you. you. Greetings. On behalf of the University of Wisconsin system, it gives me great pleasure to be part of today's celebration and to reiterate how much we appreciate and treasure our long-standing partnership. We have gathered here to commemorate the remarkable life of Mildred Harnack Fish, a Wisconsin native and UW-Madison graduate who went on to become a beloved educator, literary critic, and a member of the resistance in World War II Germany. She ultimately lost her life for her beliefs, but it is very important. We still remember her all these decades later. We have more to celebrate as well. This year marks the 45th anniversary of the wisconsin Hessen State Partners. And when I was governor, I had the privilege of visiting Hessen several times and always enjoyed it. And I also had this privilege of speaking before the Hessen Parliament in 1993. We came together to discuss trade partnerships, building on our shared heritage, and yes, our mutual interests. I also wanted to learn more about the German educational system and how that might inform what we do here in Wisconsin and how we might be able to collaborate. We should also celebrate the almost 25 year old agreement between the state of Hessen and the great University of Wisconsin system where I now serve as president. This partnership has offered incredible opportunities for students on both sides of the Atlantic to explore new ideas, 
develop a better understanding of each other's cultures, improve their language skills, and gain invaluable academic and work experience through internships. This past year or so has presented a real challenge, but we've also seen so much reason for hope with incredible scientific breakthroughs, entrepreneurial ingenuity, and the enduring human spirit. It gives us reason for hope for a brighter future. And yes, in the years ahead, the continued close partnership between Hessen and Wisconsin will be even more important in our increasingly interconnected world. We treasure that partnership and we are all enriched by it. I look forward to when we can meet face to face once again, but in the meantime, I wish you all the best. Thank you, congratulations, and good luck. I must say that I am deeply moved by your very kind, affectionate, and appreciative words. So thank you all very much on behalf of JLU for sending uh, us those pre-recorded video messages. They truly enrich our uh, program today. This hybrid format allows us to travel from the US to Germany faster than ever, and we're now back in Gießen. We're very happy to have with us today the mayor of the city of Gießen, Dietlen Grave Bolz. She will address our audience in German, and I know from experience that the large German-speaking community in Wisconsin is looking forward to her contribution in German. Thank you. Yeah, good afternoon to all of you, sehr geehrte Frau Staatsministerin Professor Sinemus, sehr geehrte Vizepräsidentin Frau Dolle, sehr geehrter Herr Thompson, meine sehr geehrten Damen und Herren, mit der Einweihung der Stele für Miltred Hanak Fisch gedenken wir heute einer mutigen Widerstandskämpferin gegen das nationalsozialistische Unrechtsregime und eines Mitglieds der Roten Kapelle, eines Zusammenschlusses, von Gegnern gegen das Naziregime. Zu der Einweihung möchte ich herzliche Grüße des Magistrats der Universitätsstadt Gießen überbringen. Miltre Tanak Fisch war durch und durch Bildungsbürgerin, international, weltoffen, tolerant, liberal. Die nationalsozialistische Propaganda und Ideologie müssen der Literaturwissenschaftlerin mit Vorliebe für den Autoren Johann Wolfgang von Goethe genau als das erschienen sein, was sie waren, ein Bruch mit der Zivilisation, ein Rückfall in die Barbarei. Nicht umsonst soll sie in den letzten Stunden vor ihrer Hinrichtung ein Gedicht Goethes an die Zellenwand geschrieben, vorher über in Englisch übersetzt haben, das Vermächtnis. Das war ihr Vermächtnis in einer Zeit, in der, oder die nicht mehr die Zeit der Dichter und Denker war. Von Miltred Hanak Fisch und ihrem Ehemann Arvid Hanak, die von den Nazis ermordet wurden, können wir bis heute viel lernen über die Widerstandskraft gegenüber Menschenverachtung, Rassismus, Antisemitismus, Chauvinismus, über den Mut, Widerstand zu leisten und über die Bereitschaft für seine Überzeugungen, für den Kampf um Freiheit, gar sein Leben zu opfern. This last, last part I would like to repeat in English. From Mildred Tarnak Fish and her husband, Arvid Tarnak, who were murdered by the Nazis, we can learn a lot to this day about resilience in the face of contempt for humanity, racism, antisemitism, chauvinism, about the courage to resist and about the willingness to even sacrifice one's life for one's convictions, for the fight for freedom and liberty. Auch heute, 80 Jahre nach dem Ende des nationalsozialistischen Terrorregimes, müssen wir wachsam sein 
beanspruchen doch Rechtspopulisten und Antidemokraten in vielen Ländern, auch bei uns und auch in ihrem Herkunftsland USA, erneut Platz in den politischen Debatten. Umso wichtiger ist es deshalb, dass wir an Menschen wie Mildred Hanak Fisch erinnern. Ich freue mich heute an der Enthüllung der Gedenkstele für diese bewundernswerte Frau in unserer Stadt teilnehmen zu dürfen. Nach der Benennung einer Straße und eines Studierendenwohnheims in Gießen gibt es nun einen weiteren Ort, der an sie und ihr Schicksal erinnern wird. Besonders erfreut mich aber, dass diese Stele die transatlantische Erinnerungskultur befördert. Die Zwillingsstelen in Wisconsin und Gießen schlagen Brücken über den Ozean. At this point I would like to quote again in English. I'm happy to participate today in the unveiling of the memorial steel to honor this admirable woman, Mildred Hanak Fisch, in our city. But I'm especially happy that this memorial sculpture promotes a transatlantic culture of remembrance. The twin steels in Wisconsin and Gießen built bridges across the ocean. Die Zwillingsstelen verweisen darauf, dass Biografien wie die Mildred Hanak Fischs uns aufzeigen können, wie eng unsere Geschichte miteinander verwoben ist und dass wir trotz manch Trennenden sehr verbunden sind und vor allem zeigen sie auch die großen Gemeinsamen, Gemeinsamkeiten, die uns verbinden. Wir betrauern den gewaltsamen Tod einer Frau, die unserer Stadt, unserem Land, unserer Welt noch so viel hätte geben können. Wir sind gleichzeitig dankbar dafür, dass wir hier wie dort in einer freiheitlichen Demokratie leben dürfen und tragen Verantwortung dafür, diese zu bewahren und mit Leben zu füllen. Demokratie ist keine Selbstverständlichkeit angesichts der Unterdrückung und Unfreiheit in vielen Teilen der Welt. Danke an all die, die durch die Errichtung dieser Stele einen weiteren Ort geschaffen haben, um sich stetig an diese große Aufgabe und an die mutige Mildred Hanak Fisch zu erinnern. Vielen Dank. No problem. <laughs> Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. And now back over to Wisconsin again for a message now from the Chancellor of UW-Madison, Rebecca Blank, who's a great supporter of our institutional friendship. Good afternoon. I'm Rebecca Blank, Chancellor at the University of Wisconsin in Madison, and I'm delighted to send my warmest wishes and congratulations to Professor Mukherjee and our friends and colleagues at the Eustace Liebig University Gießen, as you celebrate the life of an extraordinary woman whose legacy has shaped both of our universities. Mildred Fisch Harnack, or Mildred Harnack Fisch, as she's known in Germany, was a student and then a teacher here at UW at a time when the University of Wisconsin was known as the most German university in the United States. Our campus reflected the rich German culture of the state of Wisconsin, which was then home to thousands of hardworking immigrants from Germany. Today, we're home to their great-grandchildren. And though our campus no longer requires students to learn the German language, as it did when Mildred and Arvid were here, we are deeply proud of our German heritage. This heritage has been strengthened by our nearly 40-year partnership with JLU, which has also helped build on our strong tradition of activism and engagement in the world. Our longtime partnership has demonstrated a shared commitment to giving our students new ways of looking at global issues, a shared understanding of the value our exchanges bring to both campuses, and a shared dedication to continuing to nourish our relationship. For example, through the Harnack Fish Scholarship you created for a UW graduate student to study at JLU, through the annual human rights lecture here at UW that brings the legacy of this brave woman to new audiences each year, and now through our twin sculptors. When we dedicated the sculpture here in Madison in 2019, you honored us by sending an esteemed delegation to take part in our ceremony. 
We plan to be with you today, and I regret we cannot be there, but we are with you in spirit, and we look forward to seeing you again in person here in Madison. Until then, feel and dank for your partnership and friendship. I wish you good health and much success in the year ahead. Or, as my German ancestors would have said, Ich wünsche Ihnen gute Gesundheit und viel Erfolg in kommenden Jahr. Thank you. Happy to introduce to you Greta Olson, Professor of American and English Literary and Cultural Studies and Executive Director of JLU's Department of English. Greta is an American member of JLU and a scholar working very closely together with a German member uh, of U W Madison. As you can see also today, our universities are truly intertwined through the biography of our members. On a personal note, it is a great pleasure to support and work with Greta and her academic partners at UW-Madison in fostering international understanding, joint research and teaching between Germany and the US. Thank you, Greta, for speaking on behalf of JLU's English department. Thank you, Julia. It is uh, truly my honor to be here and to speak. I wish to speak extemporaneously today at the risk of an occasional slip of the tongue because I wish to try to see Mildred Harnick Fish. It is difficult to see you, Mildred, if I may speak to you in the personal. It is difficult because so much of your life has been erased. 
When I first heard your name in 2018, I said to my colleague, Martin Spies, who is Mildred Harnick Spies and uh, Fish? And he said, uh, a woman who taught in Madison and uh, maybe the U, I think English, F until quite recently, that was what I knew of your life. It has been so much erased. And I wish to thank in name Rebecca Donna, your great, great niece, who in particular, in a wonderful case of conjuring from the dead, has taken those little scraps of memory in the United States and in Germany in order to bring forward your life. It is difficult to see you because you've been erased in so many ways. You were erased, unfortunately, in part by your own family. Uh, something that has been rectified through the work of your great-great-niece, Rebecca Donna. Your sister, angry at the influence you had had on her own daughter who followed you to Germany, wished that your records be erased after your death. You were erased by your own government in your country of origin, my country of origin too, where after the war, when your death, your execution in 1943 was investigated, it was decided, instead of treating it as a war crime, to make this death, this execution classified. Because the man, the prosecutor known as Hitler's bloodhound, had convinced his inquisitors that the information he had to give on communist groups we're now in the Cold War era, was so valuable that your death could not be spoken to. And most of all, dear Mildred, if I may, you were erased by yourself through your work, through your valuable work. The one time you could return to your home, you were taken to be a Nazi sympathizer a Nazi wife, I can only begin to imagine the kind of visceral pain that would have caused you to have to masquerade in front of former friends, in front of your family as a Nazi sympathizer, something you so deeply resisted and worked against. You destroyed, as we learned through Rebecca Donner, your own journal because it would have implicated the names of others you worked with, something that during your trial, and apparently also during torture, you never did. You remained loyal to the names of those who worked with you. And Rebecca, ah, oh, Mildred, but I'm speaking to Rebecca too, thank you. Mildred, you were erased by the circumstances of history of your existence at that time, in which to speak freely, to believe in democratic ideals, to be work against totalitarian, to work against genocide, to work against the acquisition of other countries against their will, to work against the spread of hatred was not tolerated. And to do the work you needed to do, you needed to efface yourself to move from being a smiling, happy young woman, as we see in those pictures from you, uh, still from the United States and Wisconsin, from the beginning of your marriage, to being someone who was often taciturn, careful, hidden, taking care not to expose those she worked with. So Mildred, I wish to see you. I wish with your great-great-niece to conjure you forth. And that means to see you in my own limited perspective as I see you now. And what do I see? I see a deeply idealistic person who believed in social justice. This was not someone who was born with privilege. This was a girl 
whose mother with a 10th grade education supported Mildred and her siblings because the father could not or did not do so. This was someone who by virtue of the fact that the University of Madison did not charge uh, charges to those who came from the state was able to get a college and then a, a post-secondary education. This was someone who when she came to Germany and was first allowed to lecture at the University of Berlin before she had to leave there because of her political beliefs, wished to lecture not on Shakespeare, but on critically social justice novelists who spoke to American inequality and inequity, like Dos Passos, like Faulkner, like uh, uh, Theodore Dreiser. Those were their heroes. And when you taught at Bach, you taught folk songs with a social justice character like Clementine about a man who died mining and his loss to his daughter. What I see in you, a young idealistic woman like your husband, who soon after your marriage, rather than going dancing, chose to join a minor strike. I see in you someone who was willing to efface herself, her deepest belief, even to cut off her ties to those she loved in order to the do the work of resisting the Third Reich, a totalitarian regime, and the hatred that was spread during those years. It is with deep respect that I see you, Mildred. What does this mean? Only through the limited view of my own eyes as I try to understand your legacy. It means that recognition, the recognition that you are giving to me today by listening to me is a privilege to not have to erase ourselves, our opinions, our personalities, our rights and responsibilities as citizens is to, as I learn with my work with lawyers here and also sociologists, is a right, the right to recognition of individuality, of personhood, of a legal persona. And it is, as our honored mayor has said, it is a precarious privilege. It is a precarious privilege which must be fought for as we try to do as educators and which has been deeply, deeply attacked in my country of origin in the last few years. I leave you, Mildred, as your dear, dear, great niece does with one of the few traces that remains of you. You, in a very freestyle, translated uh, during your last days a poem by Goethe. Your treatment imprisoned, different from that of your husband. You had not had access to pencils. You had not been able to study or to talk much while you were in isolation. But the chaplain who worked with you was willing to smuggle in um, work and orange and something to write with you. And you translated Goethe's Vermächtnis in your own words. The first line of that is, Kein Wesen kann zu nichts verfallen. Roughly translated, no being, no living being, can decay to nothing. I believe those words are the ones that should leave us now. The statue that is, stands beside me speaks to that. It is, recognizes with its subtlety, with its reduced lines, the emergence of a personality out of a block. Mildred, I am honored to know you through the memory, through your great-great-niece. I am honored 
to be in the learning that you have to offer us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Greta, for your very moving, valuable contribution through an insight into the life, work, and fate of Mildred Harnack Fish. I would now like to briefly introduce to you and invite our last speaker to share some final remarks with us, Nick Schweitzer of the Madison Law School. Nick is one of several scholars at Madison Law School who have quite successfully cultivated and nurtured not just the academic bonds between our institutions, over time, our law schools have developed a genuine institutional friendship, which goes far beyond the scope of their cooperative activity. The extraordinary initiative of Nick to commemorate Mildred Hanak Fish and his personal commitment to support have, uh, and support have profoundly touched and impressed me and many others. And I tend to get quite emotional when I think back to some occasions where Nick and his readiness to substantially support this endeavor have, have deeply impressed me. Therefore, I will leave it at that, and I would like to thank you, Nick, sincerely for your initial idea, for the pleasant atmosphere and an open exchange of ideas, and for your trust and confidence in our work, as well as your patience. Thank you so much for having made all of this possible. We will now hear some final remarks from Nick Schweitzer, followed by a last piece of music. Afterwards, we would like to invite everyone here in Gießen to join us for a small reception and get together. After all, we would also like to take uh, the opportunity of today's event to engage in personal conversations and exchange. And of course, we will also stay in close contact with our colleagues and friends in the US who participated online today. Your virtual presence is truly appreciated and we look forward to welcoming you to Gießen in the not too distant future. Nick, please share with us your remarks on inspiration and connections. It has been a great pleasure to work with you. <clears throat> it is a privilege to be able to say a few words here on this occasion, which has brought me back to a city and an institution that I hold dear. I became involved in this event because of an, a coincidence, teaching a law class here at Eustis Liebig Universität, as well as at the University of Wisconsin, the two institutions from which Mildred earned academic degrees, and the coincidence of having served on the City Arts Commission in Madison, which was responsible for in installing the memorial there. At the risk of repeating some of what's already been said by others, especially the recent invocation of her, though I will use slightly different words, I do want to relate the salient facts of the Harnack story. And some facts bear repeating and remembering. Mildred Fish was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin in 1902 on September 16th, tomorrow a date that the state of Wisconsin has designated an official school observance day. Mildred grew up in a family that spoke German as well as English. She studied English literature at the University of Wisconsin where she earned bachelor's and master's degrees. In 1926, she met Arvid Harnack, a student from Darmstadt who was attending the university on a Rockefeller scholarship. As an interesting historical side note, Arvid's mother is apparently the granddaughter of Justus von Liebig, making him a great-grandson. Arvid and Mildred married later that year, and in 1929, they moved to Germany, where she began studies for her doctorate, first at Jena and later at Gießen, from which she received her PhD in, I had 1939, someone else said 1941. I have to check. They eventually settled in Berlin, where they and their friends and acquaintances set up a resistance movement to the National Socialist regime, distributing liter literature and passing economic and military information to the US and the USSR. They were discovered and arrested in 1942. Harvard was hanged on December 22nd. 
Mildred was originally sentenced to six years in prison, but Hitler rejected the sentence and ordered a new trial, which not surprisingly resulted in a death sentence. And she was beheaded on February 16, 1943. As some sources have said, she was the only American woman executed on the direct order of Adolf Hitler. A celebration like the one we are participating in today could not have happened during the Cold War, when Arvid and Mildred were viewed by the US as communist spies, since the Gestapo had labeled their group the Rota Capella because they were broadcasting to the USSR using radio equipment supplied to them by the Soviets. However, after the Iron Curtain dissolved and the Berlin Wall fell, the Harnacks slowly became recognized as members of a resistance group that had tried to help both the Soviets and the US. And they are now finally seen as heroes. Many of you know that Wisconsin Public Television even produced an hour long biographical tribute to Mildred a few years ago. That might seem to be the end of the story, but I need to spend a little more time talking about the end of her life. Arvid's last letter to Mildred, written when they were both in prison, has survived. And though it's too long for me to read here, I recommend it highly as a beautiful statement of their love and dedication and strength. The prison chaplain visited her on the final day in her prison cell where he find, found her occupying her mind, her scholarship, and her love of almost all things German by translating one of Goethe's poems. And I will read just a few more lines of it. It's Vermächtnis, or bequest, Kein Wesen kann zu nichts zerfallen, das ewige regt sich fort in allen. Am Sein erhalte dich beglückt, das Sein ist ewig. No being to nothing can fall, the everlasting lives in all. Sustain yourself with joy in life, life is eternal. The chaplain then accompanied her to the guillotine, and he reported that her last words were, Ich habe Deutschland auch so geliebt. I have loved Germany so much. Though I've always wondered if it, she didn't say doch instead of auch. <laughs> doch so geliebt, despite what was happening to her. Since the inception of this project to honor and celebrate Mildred, I've always said that dedicating such a memorial to one person should not be seen as belittling the equal involvement of others, including her husband, nor more importantly to diminish the deaths while the National Socialists were in power of millions of other people in Germany and throughout Europe and the rest of the world, many of whom were equally dedicated fighters and many others who were simply innocent victims. Memorials to some of them can be found in cemeteries throughout Germany and the rest of the world and also in the bronze plaques, die Stolpersteine, set in sidewalks on German cities. I walked by some of them on the streets of Gießen yesterday. Here are just two. Moritz Rosenbaum and Johanna Rosenbaum were deported in 1942 from Gießen, undoubtedly for the crime of being Jewish, to Theresienstadt, where they died in 1943 and 44, respectively. But Mildred is special to us here. First, as a connection between our two universities and between the sister states of Wisconsin and Hessen. And second, as an approachable human image that can personalize the quality of courage to risk one's life in the service of ideals that we consider essential to human freedom and dignity. Courage that we celebrate in this dedication. The word hero is often overused, but Mildred and Arvid and the other members of their group merit that encomium. And it is important to acknowledge true selfless heroism when we can. I would like to mention one other small personal connection unrelated to this event, but not unrelated to the ties between our two states. As you may know, many Germans from what is now Hessen came to Wisconsin following the failed revolution of 1848, including a preacher named Schröter, who was exiled by the Grand Duke of Hesse-Darmstadt. I'm very aware of the historical importance of the revolution of 1848 to the prominence of German culture in our state, 
German immigrants established homes and communities there, and approximately half of Wisconsin's population now still claims a German heritage, second or third generation. Those immigrants included Catholics, Lutherans, and freethinkers, and Wisconsin happens to be the home of the last remaining Freie Gemeinde in the U.S., established in 1852 by that exiled preacher, which I now happen to serve as president. In these past few years, I have been lucky enough to become a small part of all of these connections as I taught law, school, law classes here at JLU before the pandemic. And back in 2018, I suggested a memorial here to Mildred as an opportunity for the two schools and the two states to celebrate and strengthen their ties. And at that time, I imagined nothing more than a simple bronze plaque somewhere on the grounds. But now that these two similar memorial stiles have been erected in our two cities, both of which I've been privileged to stand before, my hope is that the people who see either of them will stop for a moment or two to learn more about Mildred Harnack Fish, or Fish Harnack as she's known in America, and to be inspired and encouraged and emboldened to follow her example if, heaven forbid, something like that should ever become necessary again. So wherever you are listening to this dedication ceremony, I invite you to celebrate with all of us here this beautiful and impressive memorial stele and its namesake, Mildred. Thank you. 